Hello, Jack. Hi, Sam. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> so we're actually here in this beautiful New Earth Haven Retreat Center. Wow, how exquisite is, is it to be here? This, this whole place is designed with living technology. Everything is using sacred geometry. They're using beautiful uh, crystal technology in the ground. Everything's around how do we create longevity of life in our environments. So it's extraordinary. The energy here is just oh, so beautiful. It's, it's magnetic. It's a magnetic force. And there's so much healing so much intention of healing, not only for the people that come through here and teach here and gather with community, but also in the ground itself pulsates with so much life force, so much sacredness, so much intention in the architecture and the way that all the plants are uh, placed. It's so feng shui. It's got so many elements of pure life force energy. So even stepping in here and even us sitting here and enjoying our conversation together about life and what we do and what, how we arrived here, it's, it's, I just sit here and I'm just, huh, just like still amazed. Yeah, yeah. And I've just spent a whole bunch of time with you over the last week, which has been extraordinary. And we thought we'd just share that, share a little bit about this, time that we've had together, my experience of this beautiful woman, all her beautiful <laughs> gifts that she's brought all the way to Bali with her. And uh, I'm so in honor uh, of this sweetheart because, you know, this all began this conversation because we were having a conversation. We were having a deep conversation at the beach in Senor. And it was right after, the day after I had um, invited the community um, men and women separately and I had a women's vitality course and I had a men's vitality course and John was one of the participants in my men's sexual vitality and wellness course and the next day we were just talking and sitting and, we're just, and, and the, the idea came we're like we need to share with the world our conversation our deep conversation yeah. right exactly because <laughs> this is this is the part that for me, like with everything that I've gone through in my life, all the structures and the and the beliefs that have been set up in my life around how we live our life, how to behave in in life, in relationships, in public, all of this have been confides that I've been living within and I knew that there was something not right about all this. And um, the conversation that's been had as a result of me spending time with Sola in a program has opened up the possibilities of what else is possible. If, if that isn't no longer my belief, and then I can open up into a whole different way of being with human beings and seeing the beautiful human beings for who they are and who we are yes. and connecting at a whole different level without all of the judgment that, that I've carried all my life then what is possible in relationship, in every relationship, not just partnership relationship, but every single relationship Absolutely. that we have with a human being. Absolutely, and this will manifest into the day-to-day -day activities with your coworkers, your, your family members, your children, you know, your father and your mother, and it's just such a way, it's a philosophy, isn't it? A philosophy of, of being really in touch with the humanistic endeavor of life. That's how I look at it. And yes, you know, as a holistic practitioner and a public speaker of health and wellness and vitality, which includes sexual vitality, because we have a lot of uh, energy that can be tapped in from there that can benefit us in, in our everyday life to give us more life force. And we all want more life force, right? Mm. The, the whole idea of consideration of immortality which is just extension of our life is is just it's outrageous when when every everything is 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 kind of put around this whole idea that you're only going to live to like 60 or 70 or 80 years old because of the structures that are in place to support you only living to 60 70 80 years old and you consider actually hold on there's a whole other way of feeding our body and nurturing our body and healing our body and creating longevity in our body and releasing all the toxins and the toxicity mm -hmm. and the, the, 
the energy that's inside our cells and automatically giving us, you know, creating a youngness around us today. Like, look how gorgeous this beautiful woman is. <laughs> look know? how gorgeous yeah. this beautiful man is, you know? It's like human being to human being, and that's what the gist of this is, is how do we fall in love with not only ourselves, but how do we fall in love with other human beings, whether they're man or woman or child? How do we truly embrace them with the lens of angelic love? To see people around and really connect to them on a deep soul-to-soul -soul level. It's quite profound. And abundance. You know, there's so much talk and conversation about abundance, but this abundance comes quite naturally when you're living in the state of being. And when you've elevated yourself in, in a high level of consciousness, high frequency, high vibration, then everybody and anybody wants to be in that, in that field. You attract that and you put that out and your tribe, your tribe, are they, uh, you find your tribe, they find you. You know, there's unmis it's unmistakable, yeah. right? That energy. And of course, we're in Bali which is all magnified, and the tribes all here already, they've been showing up for ages, but there's tribes in, in, in every every city of the world. And the thing for me is, is this whole new way of showing up in the morning, showing up in my life every moment, um, looking at how I can become and embody that myself first. Because, of course, we can go out and conscious, or, you know, in our mind go, oh, this is my plan, I'm going to go out, I want to find these communities, and, but actually it's got nothing to do with that. Um, it's actually a commitment to a journey that it isn't, it's not an easy journey, it's not a comfortable journey. This is a journey of reaching in and delving into our deepest fears, into the dirt and the stuff under your nails, the stuff that you never want to dig up, and digging it up and actually releasing that and dealing with that. And that's a daily commitment. That's a that's a moment by moment commitment. Mm -hmm. And when we're in that state of of consciousness, in that state of meditational being, every moment, and you're looking at everything, going, "Oh my God, look at what is around us!" Really, really looking at everything with like newness, you know, like a child, like we were when we were children. The innocence and the beauty, how everything in a child's eye seems wonderful and colorful and vibrant. And when you start to clean yourself out of physical toxins, mental toxins, energetic toxins, and even lineage toxins that gets passed on through generations and generations of suffering through our DNA system, you know, it's, it's quite profound. It's quite profound when you do sort of this internal housekeeping and you, you, you release all of this. And once all of this like cobweb is, is out, then you can truly, wow, when you sit with somebody, you're like, oh my God, I'm so happy to meet you. Oh, wow, you know, it's like, no, and you really look into their eyes and you appreciate all the wonderfulness of, of everybody, every nature, everything, you know? And you just vibrate like this, and it's quite natural. It's so profound that you now get an opportunity to see everybody for where they're at in their life, where they're at in this journey. Because you can see it immediately when you look at them. You can feel their energy. You can see it in their eyes. You can see it in their connection. You can see it in their embrace, which is like a little embrace or it's a no, it's it's a full melting embrace. Yeah. Always with a full melting embrace, like just really feeling the core, the core of their essence, the core of their heart, you know. And when you embrace people, I mean, this is a physical way to do it, but even when not physically embraced, even just being in the presence of someone in this elevated state, you can just feel, it's palpable, you can feel them embracing you like this, just with their eyes, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it, it's I, I've got I've got this term I, I don't know if I got it from you but it's 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 now in my, my language which is you just want to drink the other person it's like wow and they just they go through you they they yeah, melt into you they they become you because we are one we are one we are one energy yeah. we are one one life force together yeah 
and you hear that term oneness, you know, quite a bit, you know. The oneness is has to do with everyone just being in tune with each other, really understanding, really seeing and feeling, and that sense of being heard, and really feeling like you've been heard and you've been felt. Mm. You know, and you've been understood. And once that happens, you feel this oneness, and you can be anywhere in any surrounding, and you just, and, and everybody catches on. Everybody pretty much catches on to that feel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it becomes an infectious thing. You know, what I love about living here, um, and I know that now that I've, I've experienced this, and I'm walking this walk, and I'm, I'm doing my daily connection with this, I know that wherever I go in the world, this shows up. And it shows up because not because I'm looking for it. It shows up because I am open for it to show up and because I know that everything that's happening in my life is working for me and everything is perfect in every way. So I'm looking for the perfection in everything. I'm looking for the perfection in every moment and every person that I come that I that I come in contact with. And when you come from that place, they open up. It's like it's like the flower opening up and showing you its true self, its true colours. And that's only because you created that. It's not that you're looking for it or needing it. It has but manifested quite naturally. Yeah. It has just manifested quite naturally. And, and when that happens, wow, you're just always in the state of gratitude. Gratitude that, you know, I always feel like personally in my journey, if I'm going with the flow, like a water element, when you just accept things as they come without placing expectations, because sometimes you place expectations on things and then you set yourself up for failure, right? <laughs> so when you're just moving with the flow and, oh my gosh, this happened, wow, it was meant to be then, right? Yeah. <laughs> or this happens or that. Yeah. And you just embrace it rather than have like an agenda. You know, even this, even arriving here, ever since I've arrived here in Bali, it's been like that. Every day has been a, an ebb and flow and a wonderful surprise, like a treasure. Every day I open up a treasure chest. <laughs> Literally. I'm in. I'm yeah. in. It's, and you know, it's, it's the, the whole thing of us making meaning of things comes from us having the expectations and having you know, the education programs and stuff like that, or the programming in us that makes something right or wrong. And the moment we can just let go of all that, then everything is possible and, mm -hmm. and everything will show up again to, to support you. Yeah. It's, it's, really, it's really beautiful when you get to this space because that's when people like Sola shows up. And I'm sitting in a, in a restaurant down in Sanua and I'm having a beautiful day and I'm just enjoying every moment of the day. And then people show up and then I'm invited to catch up and connect with Sola and I'm going, Who's this beautiful person who's just walked in? And next thing I know, I'm doing a program that's elevating me to a whole different level of consciousness and state of being. And it wasn't because I was looking for it. I'll, it's because I'm living the commitment of being this way every day. And that's why we show up and you, you find each other. Yes, yes. Without having to work it out. There's nothing to work out. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, it's though, you know, you. Uh, once all of this um, programming, conditioning, you know, old belief systems and old patterning and how you grew up, how you were raised and all the things that, that have been conditioned in your life, you know, all of that is there. Of course, we all have that. And we've all had our levels of sufferances, you know, growing up and, and um, having to, um, you know, be uh, dealing with all of the things that, that we that are presented to us in our life. But the thing, the beauty of this is that there is hope. There's a big element of hope. And the hope is, the sense of hope can bring everyone, everyone, out of their previous conditioning and step into the radiance, the radiance of who they really are. Hmm. I, I, I want to ask you a few questions because people who are watching this <laughs> may be considering you know, doing something with you and I, I want I, I want to ask you a few questions on their behalf if that's okay. Sure. One of them which was which was hugely profound for me was 
this way of honoring your your partner, but honoring your lover of, of you know the person that that you've been with. I wanted you to kind of share a little bit because that that is really come it comes from such a beautiful place. It it, it, re it removes all of this preconceived idea around sex and pornography and all yeah. this other when you look at it in the way that you look at it. Yeah, it's it's really about honoring so that we start to look at another human being. And let's take, for example, our beloved partners, right? Let's say, you, let's say you've just connected with someone and you really felt, wow, I really want to connect on a deeper level with this person. You know, I really admire and I'm, feel, I'm having feelings for this person, okay? So in this particular scenario, um, what I like to coach couples and communities and in my courses is how to bond on a heart-to-heart -heart level and some of the ways in which to do that is for example I mean there's many ways right there's communicative there's interpersonal relational but here's a felt sense kind of kind of um, picture that you're gonna see it's like let's say that, that you're hugging this person you know so many things arrive before you hug the person that you love. And let's say you're, you're rushed and you've got all these things and clutter. And a, a lot of times, you know, we'll say hello and, and we'll just give each other a hug like this. But it's not often. It's always rushed. Everything in life seems to be rushed. But how about this? Oh, John, it's been so nice to see you right now. I'm so happy to see you. Wow. So it's so beautiful to see your shining happy <laughs> eyes. Oh, let me just connect with your eyes, John. I need to see you. And now let's give each other a hug. <laughs> right? Yeah. So often, what do we do on a normal, normal day to day basis when we see our beloved or when we see anybody that? I am automatically see them. We just, oh, hi, good to see you. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. And then we start to chatter. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> That's such a different feeling than. What's your conversation? Yeah, oh, yeah. Then, okay. We're together. We will not. Let's connect. Let's connect eye contact first. Let's take a moment to ground. The eye contact and breathing together, just even momentarily, two to three seconds, you're grounding with that person, right? And then we're giving each other a hug. It makes all the difference in the world. That person just felt that you were there, and I felt also. And it was a way to initiate the beginnings of our connection. And it could be momentary momentary connection and it could be on in passing, but still we took the time to initiate this beautiful grounding and connection. You know, that it goes deep. As we have beautiful music that just has filled up the uh, space around us. <laughs> How is that for a, a an intro in? <laughs> Right. Oh. That's 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 one of the the small things out of just spending time with Sola that that is it's changing the way that I see my connection with other human beings. There's so much more that she that she, she teaches and guides us on in grounding and in connecting them with, with Mother Nature. Um, just beautiful techniques in longevity that you may have been thinking about. You may have been going, I wonder how this actually works. You may have, you may have read some books about it. And, and there's just an inkling of consideration that there's something else out there. What Sola does, it just kind of cracks that all open for you. It gives you a whole deep dive into different areas on how we can really change the way that we live our life every day and energize that and create longevity and, and healing in every moment and everything that we do. That's right. 
and it's it's a conscientious way of living and it's a conscientious way and I use the word conscientious instead of conscious because when you're conscientious you take I feel like you take the time to really be in presence presence with your environment presence with nature presence with the five elements presence with mother earth and you know the universe whatever you want to call it you know it's really being present in your environment and especially with a, a, another human being it's so important every human being that you come into contact with should be felt with full presence and yeah so it's a way of it, it, that's why I call it a humanistic endeavor. It's a humanistic endeavor. So thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> so beautiful. If, if, if anybody is considering this is a journey that I'm up for, something that I've been considering, it's a beautiful woman to be doing with. Thank you so much.